So Jake, Jacob, when you're ready, if you can put up the first slide. So before I start, I'd just like to, to, just to quickly pray and just say, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord and our, and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Um, so yeah, no, it's been an um, immense privilege to be part of the study group. And it really helped me after my kidney transplant because um, it really gave me sort of focus and made me realize that actually God had given me a second chance. And uh, so that, that fellowship just at the start of COVID, I think, I only did one physical men's group and then we were in lockdown. So um, when it comes to the men's uh, study group, we, we think about who really is in control. And we like to think that Paul, as our leader, has got a semblance of control. We sometimes like to think that God has got a semblance of control. But not. Jacob, next slide. Because what is it in control of the men's Bible study group is golf. <laughs> golf is in control of the men's Bible study group. Because there's so much debate about the quality of the greens, uh, how God created woods and, and putters and... Um, pictures of what sand pictures what sand wedges whatever whatever it is and then Ben always ends up by saying let's focus on the fair way to heaven <laughs> yeah Jacob next slide so what I want to talk about today is, is who is in control who is in control of our world who is in control of our lives and you know isn't God wonderful the way that he has just moved this service because it started with uh, Jeff saying a few words, and everybody has alluded to the way that God is faithful and God is in control of our lives. But do we let him be in control of us? So we're looking here at some, some, some fantastic scenes of the, the, the uh, world that God has created and that the world that God intended for us to live in, for man and woman to live in this world. Uh, next slide, <coughs> Jacob. So here is the evidence. I think it's really important, and Paul's a you know, great advocate of that, that actually all the evidence that we need is in this one book, it's, you know, The Guide to Life. And uh, if we always refer to that and always reference that, and the evidence is there, uh, we can't go far wrong in our walk and our journey with him. So we know we start from Genesis 1, and we know that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. In the previous slide, that is what I'm sure some parts of the Garden of Eden uh, look like, and, and uh, what an amazing place uh, it is. And then he created humankind, and the fact that, you know, the many references in the Lord's Word about how we are fearfully and wonderfully made. I can't remember what um, psalm that's from, but I know that, that David, David wrote it. So, you know, we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and Jesus said that he, can, he knows the number of hairs on each of our heads. In my case, and Paul's case, not a lot, and, and in Ben's case. <laughs> but in a lot of other people's case, th th there's a lot there. And, and, you know, isn't that wonderful reassurance that we are absolutely unique? And God has control right from even before we were conceived in our mother's wombs. And then we just go for a bit more uh, evidence, which I think is good and important. We go to Colossians 1.16. For by him all things were created. Paul says, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. I think that's really important. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And I think that's important because in the world that we live in, you know, we do question perhaps our governments. We do question sometimes, in my case, in the Anglican Church, I, I confess that I do question some of our leadership. And, um, you know, but God has, has said that he... He has created all rulers and authorities, and we must respect that. And finally, in Revelation 4.11, Worthy are you, O Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and, and by your will they existed and were created. So God is, is, is showing us there from his creation of the world in Genesis 1. You know, he is in control, and all the evidence is there. Next slide, please, Jacob. So what have we done about it? It's not great, is it? Um, you know, those are some of the images, uh, the volcano that's uh, uh, keeping erupting at the moment. 
and the world that we live in, uh, you know, is, is, is changing before our eyes. And it's still God's created world, but when mankind decides to do his or her own thing, we see the evidence of that, and we feel the evidence, and, and no more so than we are in today. Jacob? So what does God say about that? So for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. So Jesus predicted how we would behave and the effect that what would ha that have on his created world. For as, for as were in the days of Noah, so will, be the com so will be the coming of the Son of Man. So, you know, we, we know through evidence uh, in scripture that what people's behavior was like in the days of Noah and God's patience ran out. And I don't, I would, I would suggest to you that it's no different today. You know, humankind's behavior, we only need to open the news or uh, open social media and we get a good uh, string of um, what has been happening out there. And then even back in Genesis 6, the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And I think that's important because the world that we live in, you know, we are not of the world. Once we have committed to Christ, we are not of this world, but we do reside in this world. And, you know, as long as we are situationally aware, which is a really good military uh, saying, as long as we're situationally aware of the world around us, it gives us some courage in, in terms of dealing with, with what we see and hear and how people react to us. And finally, in Luke 21, there'll be great earthquakes in various places, famines and pestilences, and there'll be terrors and great signs from heaven. And you could argue that that's been going on, you know, for all of time. Um, and you could say, well, actually, is it more today than it was, you know, a, a thousand years ago or 500 years ago? Or is it media? Because media is so fast that we have access to uh, these new stories but they are out there, and God is in control, and things will happen in his own time. Jacob, next slide, please. So what about us in the here and now? So there are some images of people feeling probably quite alone, quite sad, and we all, you know, go through tough times in our lives, and there are lots of times like that um, that we feel down. No more so than the testimonies we've heard of what life is like before Jesus comes into our lives. And, um, you know, the testimonies that we've heard this morning uh, are really, really powerful and a great example of what happens, um, you know, to humankind when, uh, when God is not in our lives. Next slide, please, Jacob. So what about us in here today? I mean, there's a real sense of joy, isn't there? That the Holy Spirit is with us and... Uh, you know, we are here together as a family of God. And, you know, once we are committed to Christ, Christ enters our lives. He never said it would be easy. It never would be an easy journey. We know that. But actually, you know, there's real joy and real hope there. And, and God has asked us to be a light in the world. And we have a responsibility to share that light uh, with others. But God is still in control. Jacob. So what about your own life journey or life experience? Well, we've, we've, we've heard it from uh, Martin and, and the two that are being baptized. And we all have individual stories and tales to tell. And our journeys aren't over yet, are they? We've still got time uh, to go before we are, God willing, called home. And, you know, everyone has a story to say and, and the life experience. And I say that because, you know, I'm sure that all of us will think about times when God has really proved to us uh, that he is in control, even probably before we, before we knew Christ. Jacob? So what is life like without God? And again, the evidence is here in Scripture, and uh, the classic one, Romans 3.23, and I've heard it twice already today, but for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Fact. For all have, fall, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And therefore, the, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. And it's just sharing that message with others as best we can to offer them that free gift of uh, eternal life through, through Jesus Christ with God. 
And it's very clear, isn't it? The one who rejects me and does not receive my words has a judge. The word that I've spoken will judge him on the last day. So I think, you know, that always makes my stomach churn. I say, well, am I, am I on the right side of, of, uh, of, of the Lord? And, um, you know, we're all fallible and on our journeys together, um, you know, we do all fall short, but we have Jesus. It's Jesus' promise to us. Nothing that we can do. It's Jesus' promise to us that, uh, that is that reassurance. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. And that can be quite a controversial verse, I think, because, you know, a lot of people say to us, I'm sure we've had that this question uh, before from people, non-Christians, you know, what about all those people that don't have the opportunity of, of hearing the gospel? All those people that, um, you know, in the world that, that uh, just don't have that, that opportunity. Um, but it's, it's, these are big questions and, and a lot of questions that, that, that really is up for God's control and uh, not for us uh, today. Next slide, please, Jacob. So I just want to share with you a couple of things in my own life experience, because I can't speak for you, only you can speak for you, but I can speak for, for me. And, and actually, isn't hindsight a really wonderful thing? Um, you know, when we think back in the cold light of day about what God has done for us and the control that he has on our life, and you don't realize it at the time, um, and you think back and, and, and actually, you know, it, it's pretty awe-inspiring. So, for me, I've got a few pictures up there of the things that, that have happened in my life. Um, I, I used to play a, a reasonable level of rugby union. I was in the textile trade, so there's some, some uh, coloured uh, bobbins there and a sewing, uh, little sewing factory. I've put our, our little church, lots of little St. Oswald's in Ashbourne on there, and uh, sort of mi my military side uh, on the bottom uh, left there, that's a parade that uh, we had up in Edinburgh on the regiment that I was commanding at the time, um, and I was blessed that I was able to, to lead uh, my soldiers, and that's me on the front. Um, and uh, we've got uh, Ben's kidney up there, uh, about to go into, uh, uh, into me. It's not Ben's kidney, but, but that was a clearly important part of my journey. And um, I just, you know, you might wonder why I've got HM Prison, Foston Hall, uh, up there on the slide, uh, and that's another story, but, but, but in short, uh, there was an opportunity that, that the Lord gave me in terms of setting up a sewing factory within that prison. It's a female prison. It's quite a high category, um, and it was just a very uh, a powerful time uh, of, of helping those ladies that had been through really difficult times. So for me, um, I suppose my life now is, is very much my civilian life and my service in the armed forces. I've served in the armed forces for 20 years. And I think when I think back at my own journey and, and, like, and God's control of that, I, you know, I have more examples in my military side that, 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 that spring to mind than, than um, in my civilian side. So I just want to share a couple of those. So um, I effectively was diagnosed with my autoimmune disease that broke down my kidneys in about 2009, 2010. And over that sort of uh, decade up to uh, my transplant, um, uh, it was only latterly that I was on dialysis, but as, my kidneys, as your kidneys deteriorate, so the toxin levels in your blood uh, build up. And um, ov over time, my toxin levels were building up, and uh, they all basically head south. So I, I, I struggled a little bit with my mobility. And I can remember in about 2015, uh, every year, all soldiers and officers have to do a mandatory annual fitness test. We have to do other tests, shooting and, and, and uh, medic, medical tests, etc. cetera. Um, but we had, a, we had a run. And, you know, as a relatively senior officer, you know, I, 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 I expect myself and my peers to be able to complete fi fitness tests, leadership by example, etc., um, you know, in, in a good time compared to soldiers. And I knew that on this particular occasion, I was going to struggle. I knew that I just could not run like I used to. So we set off, we did up at one of the Army Reserve Centres in Wigan. It's one and a half miles in a, in a specific time. And I suppose there were about 10 of us on the run that day. 
and off we went. And everyone else shot off because they're about 50 years younger than me. Um, and I sort of waddled at the back, and it was felt, felt like a waddle. And I just thought, this is so, uh, so annoying and so embarrassing. And I prayed my way around it, and I lost sight of them. We did it around the uh, JJB Stadium up in Wigan. And as I approached the finishing line, um, I tried to put a bit of extra effort in, and I asked the, uh, the physical training instructor you know, what my time was. And unbelievably, I was in time. And I said, this, is, this can't be right. I can't be, I can't be in time because everyone else was, was way ahead of me. Oh, no, the, the guy just in front of you has just come in. And I just thank God because how, how he did that, I have no idea. But, you know, I came in time. The evidence was there. And uh, that was a real evidence to me of God's control. On another occasion, uh, we do live firing exercises down at Senny Bridge um, with our rifles. And this was pre-Afghanistan deployment training, and effectively you are firing at various targets, you're doing various attack and defense moves, but you're firing with live ammunition, and um, you know, it is pretty dangerous. Sometimes in the media you get reports that people have been fatally injured uh, on such exercises, and on one such occasion, um, we were doing an attack, and um, as we were coming to the end of the attack, certainly, you know, I, 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 I uh, let the, the rounds in my magazine go. And I felt this sharp pain just there on my nose. And it was a round, we call it a round or a bullet, I had ricocheted off a piece off a stone and landed just here. And it was less than an inch away from my eye uh, and, and my brain. <laughs> Um, and, I, uh, and at the time, you don't think about it, but when I thought about it, you know, God has got incredible control, even on that. You know, accidents do happen, things happen. It, you know, God never said it would be a bed of roses. But that was another evidence to me that, um, you know, God is in control of my life. On another occasion, when I was getting particularly ill with my um, kidney disease, and I was driving back from Edinburgh uh, on the M74, I fell asleep, fast asleep in the car. I was the only car on the, on the M74, and what woke me up were the, the chevrons things on the hard shoulder. <laughs> and it woke me up, and I just praised God again, because God was in complete control. Whether it was angels surrounding the car, whatever it may be, God was in complete control, and it was just that, that reminder. So the last thing I just want to, want to share with you on that, in terms of my own evidence and my own life, is that um, when I finished command, the, the, the army have various ways of, 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 of uh, you applying for new jobs, and uh, it is you know, pretty competitive, and the army are very keen to get the best people in the, in the best jobs. So as I finished my commanding officer job in Edinburgh, I thought, so I looked at the list, and there were five jobs that myself as a lieutenant colonel could be uh, available for, and uh, so I put my list in order, and on the bottom of the list was a job basically in Telford, in the engagement department for the West Midlands. And I didn't really want it. I was thinking, probably, probably a bit, bit too humorous, thinking of, you know, quite ambitious, or I want to work in Army headquarters, or I want to work in Home Command, or I want to work, you know, within Field Army. And uh, when the result came through, uh, God had put, given me my, this fifth job. And, you know, I'm ashamed to say I was a bit, a bit gutted, a little bit disappointed. And... I accepted it, and, and God said, this is what I want you to do, and I thought, well, I, I don't really understand it. And then it dawned on me that that job was the closest one to my home. And as I was recovering from my kidney operation, he wasn't going to send me down to Andover or Aldershot or Warminster down south. He was going to keep me nice and comfortable and close to home. So that was the first thing. The second thing is COVID hit, and actually our opportunities for engagement within communities um, within the West Midlands were, were very difficult through the COVID. We did you know, quite a bit virtually, but actually the impact wasn't there. And I wasn't really enjoying the job, so for 18 months I wasn't really enjoying the job, just going through the motions of it, basically on a part-time basis, as reservists do. And suddenly, um, in July this year, uh, there are two lieutenant colonels, one's a part-time me, and then we have a full-time We've had a few problems with toxicity, uh, coercive behavior, manipulation, and bullying from, from my colleague. Anyway, that, that issue was unlocked, and, and effectively, he's left. 
So the question was asked by the chain of command, Toby, can you step into the breach uh, and look after the department? And while you're at it, we've got an issue because we've got the Commonwealth Games um, coming to Birmingham, um, uh, the West Midlands, next year, and we've got no one, there's no plan to lead our you know, military engagement within um, the Commonwealth Games. We're, we're doing the security wrap. We, you know, we're not going back to what we were in 2012 at the London Olympics. But uh, So that's being done by another couple of colleagues. But it's engagement. It's that peace on the streets and the transport hubs. And uh, so that was an amazing opportunity. And about a week later, uh, I was asleep um, at, um, at home. It was a Friday uh, night. And the Lord woke me up at 1.35 a.m. And he gave me the plan. He said, this is what I want you to do to deliver effect uh, on, on the streets of Birmingham and, and the other venues around the West Midlands for the Commonwealth Games. And it, all I can describe is like drinking 15 cans of Red Bull plus 10 espressos, you know. <laughs> and uh, so I lay in bed and went over the plan, went over the plan, went over the plan. And about 4.30, I said, Lord Jesus, I'm really tired now. Please now have some sleep. And he put me out. The following day, he woke me up at 1.30, and the same thing happened. He said, so what are we going to do about this plan, Gadam? I said, don't know, Lord. <laughs> what do you want me to do about it? Well, why don't you go up? You can have a cup of tea, get lots of bits of paper and a pen, and let's write this thing down. Otherwise, you'll forget. And uh, so that was I, was, I was up for two or three hours and wrote, wrote copious notes and praised God and thanked God, and, and they said, right, off you go. You can go to bed now, get some sleep. And it was quite funny, the following day, my wife said to me, I said, this, is, this, this strange thing has happened. He said, I'm, and she said, I'm not surprised, because uh, the more, you know, er, early morning is the only time that you're going to listen to him. And how true is that for all of us? Jacob, can you do the next slide? So in terms of evidence, I think that um, this passage from Job, and uh, I've not, not got long, much more to say, but this passage from Job is, is just so, so powerful. I just want to read it out to you from the NIV. It's from chapter 1, verse 6. One day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, from roaming through the earth and going to and fro in it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Does Job, Job fear, fear, fear God for nothing, Satan replied? Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hands so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. But stretch out your hand and strike everything he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, very well, then everything he has is in your hands, but on the, on the man himself do not lay a finger. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that such a confirmation that God uh, is, is in control? And he's even giving Satan permission to uh, aff put affliction onto Job. And I just wonder what happens in the heavenly realms in, in, in each of our journeys. God is so much in control. And God does say, again, Paul know which passage it is, that he will not put us, he will not tempt us beyond what we can bear. And that is, you know, that, that reassurance that God is absolutely in control of our lives. I think that passage is really powerful. Jacob, next slide, please. So making our own choices, I don't tend to read these all out. Uh, you can all read them yourselves. But God has given us free will, hasn't he? And we can make our own choices. And either we can make them prayerfully with him, or we can decide to do our own thing. And sometimes those choices and those temptations are really, really challenging and really difficult for us. But there's reassurance there in Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. So top tip, stay close to God. Next slide, Jacob, please. So God, as I say, didn't say the Christian life would be easy. Faith makes things possible, not easy. I think some of these sayings are fantastic. Your life as a Christian should make non-believers question their disbelief in God. I wonder what impact you know, we have 
I've done a strap line for, for uh, armed forces engagement at the Commonwealth Games, and it goes like this. How will you inspire the people you meet today for them to aspire to be like you tomorrow? How will you inspire the people you meet today for them to aspire to be like you tomorrow? And I think that, you know, that applies to my colleagues in the armed forces, Army, Navy, and Air Force, but actually it applies to our Christian witness. Next slide, please, Jacob. So what is life, life like with God? Again, more of evidence, and we've got John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And as Paul would say, eternal life starts now for all of us. Jacob, next slide. Jacob, next slide. So I just want to end uh, in a prayer. So please, uh, just bow your head. Father God, I just thank you that ultimately you are in control. You're in control of everything that happens. You have authority over all. And you have authority and control over all our lives. And I pray that this day that we may all be obedient to you. Thank you. Be faithful to you. Know that you are in control of everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly that happens to us. That we may be faithful. And know that those things that happen in our life's journey are to build us up, to prepare for the responsibilities and the challenges that you have in the world to come for us. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.